Well, hey, hey everybody. It's, it's lovely to, to, to be here. It's lovely to see all the people that come up for the, for the webinar. It's, it's really cool. Uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen. I know Uruguay is not the most known country. We're little, really small between uh, Uruguay and uh, Brazil and Argentina. Sorry. Um, I cannot seem to find my presentation. It's just um, but well, we, we try to be a standalone destination. We're trying to. <laughs> Uruguay has amazing things to see there. Yeah, you have in a really small country, you have a lot of different landscapes. So that's really good. Let me check why my screen is in Spain. Just give me a second. Sorry, everybody. I'm going to share it like this. Let me see if you can see the presentation. Yes. Perfect. So I'm going to start uh, just giving you uh, just the, the whole presentation is mostly about uh, getting to know Uruguay. Because as I said, we are uh, not the most known country. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a lovely country with a lot of things to see. Here's a map so you can just get your locations. Uh, where the mountains, where the most is pointing, it's Montevideo, which is the capital city. We're uh, a country of 3.5 million people and 1.5 live in Montevideo. So we have a lot of area filled with um, just countryside, a lot of cows. We have four cows per people per person. Uh, you have Colonia, which is an UNESCO site. Uh, most of the times we start with Colonia. Just so people get to know uh, a really colonial town that is here. Yeah. It, it has been really taken care of and it's truly amazing. We have some wine country on the on the top of Carmelo here. If you go more inland, you get most of the farms. Uh, we do get amazing farms where you can have a a rural, uh, a truly like gaucho experience here in Uruguay. Uh, we have that 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 the, the most of the surf town for the big towns, which is La Barra, José Ignacio, Punta del Este, which is the most known. And then we have the coast of Rocha, which is next to Brazil, where we have most of our, our, our natural parks. Uh, so, as I said, we start in Colonia, which is really close to Buenos Aires. We have a 45 minute uh, ferry, and we have one that goes uh, from Montevideo, the capital, that is two and a half hours. So it's really easy to connect to Buenos Aires. Actually, I'm from there, so it's, it was really easy. Here's some snapshots of Colonia. As you can see, it's a lovely old town. Most of the times we start with a walking tour and we do some mocha tasting. Mate, if you don't know, it's, it's the traditional Uruguayan drink. People drink it all day long. Uh, most of the times you can see people with pharmacies. This is the mate, for example. We try to, to get uh, tourists to try them because it's a, it's a really unique experience when you have mate. Most of the times we share it, we love to share mate. We do visit some key regions that are really close to, to Colonia. One of them um, is La Viña. They do cheeses from goats, from uh, sheep and cows. So it's really special. The family is the one that receives you, the, they make you some lunch. They can have tasting. It's, it's really amazing. We combine it with some wineries that are close to Colonia as well, like El Pinton, for example. It's very really nice. Then we go up uh, up to Carmelo, which is a uh, 45 an hour drive. Uh, these countries here are really close. I mean, you can cross across, you can go across yeah. the whole country in seven hours. So everything is pretty near everything else. We have some Jesuit women in Carmelo. Carmelo was the, the first point where the Jesuits were, were the ones who got the vineyards. And we do have really special wines here. Carmelo is one of the biggest wine regions. For example, here we have Narbona. It's a wine lodge that we use a lot. Uh, it is some amazing experience. We, we have uh, the harvest here is from mid-February up until March. So it's a really nice time to visit, uh, especially when you have like families there. Are are into wine and you don't know what to do with the kids, well, it's a, it's a lovely experience to do. We do have the Marina del Faro near Carmelo, uh, where we do a lovely sunset cruise that, that, uh, sunset cruise that goes up to uh, kilometer zero of the Rio de la Plata, the Rio Plate. 
uh, it's, it's a really nice experience. And then you can have a, a lunch or um, dinner at Pasta Pedro, which is in the marina. It's lovely. Then if we go more to, to the center of the country, we do get to the estancias and in Preventos, we do have the Anglo, which was a factory of corned beef during the Second World War. So it's really important for, for, for the UK folk uh, to visit there. It has a lot of reminiscence to, to a couple of, a couple of, a lot of years ago. Then we go to the Estancias, uh, where we can have a, a lovely stay and an authentic stay in, in a working Estancia. La Bendición is one of the, our favorites. They do great polo horses as well, so it's really nice if you could go and have a horseback ride or just chicken in the cows and and see what it's like left in uh, day to day in, in, in a farm, a working farm. <laughs> they do have kayaks and they do water ski horses, as I said. Panchi, I'm to sorry the, to interrupt yeah. you, but uh, yeah, no, no, it's just the sound is not really good. Is there, do you have a, a phone or something that maybe you can? Oh, no, I can try to speak to the mic. I think now it's better. Can you hear yeah, me there? Okay, yeah. I'm going to go closer to the camera then. <laughs> Perfect. So then we get to Montevideo, which is a capital city. It says a lot about um, why Uruguayans are like they are, um, a lot about culture. We do have amazing artists, being a country is so little. We do get amazing artists, painters, sculptors, uh, well, musicians. And we try to connect everything with the culture in Montevideo. We try to always let people go to Montevideo. We have the the old city, which is this part near the port, where you do have an amazing hotel. We work with it's called La Historica. It's an old house that has been refurbished. It's really small. It's a boutique hotel. And then we have all of this. This is all the Rambla, which is um, the, the, the coast uh, coastal route for the city. Uh, it's, it's really traditional. With the Uruguayans from Montevideo, they go every day to to the Rambla just to go to work or just to have some mate in the afternoon, which is lovely. In the old city, we have the pork market where we love to, to stop because it's filled with parrillas, uh, some barbecue restaurants. They are amazing to, to get to see. It used to be an old market, of course. Then we go on the walking tour of the old city and end up in, in the, the Liberty Square, which is the, the, the main square of, my, of the old city of Montevideo. We have the here's La Rambla. Uh, all the city looks up uh, to the to the river. You can swim there. It's, it's an amazing part of the river. We do have uh, these lovely characters such as Lua Noni, is this one here in the red shirt. He's a uh, drums this year, um, and he's one of the, the most recognized persons uh, in Candombe. Candombe is a little boy rhythm. It was um, born of of the of the slaves that live here, they only had a, a day to, to celebrate. And we now remember that day in Las Llamadas, uh, which was part of a carnival. We have the longest carnival also in the world. It's 45 days of carnival. Um, and in Las Llamadas, uh, is, is when they, they used to like start playing the drums on that day that could they, they could celebrate. Um, to call everybody that was working to say, OK, come on, let's celebrate. And uh, we still recall that. We do uh, go and visit Lobo. He's amazing. He has a lot of stories. Uh, I mean, his great great grandfather bought his way out of slavery, actually. Uruguay was the first uh, country in all of the Americas to, to abolish slavery. It's a really progressive country. And that says a lot about Uruguay. We do love visiting him. We do love visiting uh, Manuel visiting Manuel Pelgueras. He's an amazing analogist. Uh, he has a little small winery, but we love to visit him because we, he has uh, a dinner and uh, the, the family is all there. You get to know the family, you get to know about Tanat wine, uh, Tanat grape, which is our inside grape. Um, and it, it, he, he's an amazing character. We love to say that Uruguay is mostly about his people and he's a, a great representation of that. Then we go up to Route 9, uh, going east. And we have what we call the Uruguay and Tuscany, which is another wine country, of course, uh, where we have a lot of olive oil uh, and wineries. We do have Pueblo Den, Eden Town, and Asun Town. They are both like this healing, lovely 
towns, little towns actually, um, where we do hikes and bikes and horseback rides. Then what we, we get to visit the, the wineries, of course. It's really near Jose Ignacio, which is uh, our main beach town. So, so most of the times we try to be able to stay in Jose Ignacio and go and visit these towns or do a hike, do a bike, or a horseback ride. Perfect for Please go level, which is really lovely. This near the greenery. This is the the old station in Pueblo Raton, which we do with uh, our bike tour there. This is the main square of uh, Pueblo Raton, where this is Mama. I don't know if you have heard of him. Uh, she's an Argentinian cook, an Argentinian chef. She's really famous, and he loved Pueblo Raton, so he has his restaurant and, and hotel there. We do uh, offer class with him or his team. Which are amazing because they put up everything on the street. It's, it's a really small fun bike and, and we love it. We have Bodega del Sol, which is one of our, our biggest winners. It has actually uh, been listed for the first time in a row of the second uh, best winery of the new world. And it also is the only one that has this certification on sustainability. It's 4,000 hectares, so it's quite big. Uh, and it has amazing views. We love to bike there or do a hike and tasting. We get to the beach town where we have Punta del Este, which is the most known. It, it was really hit in the 90s. Uh, now we see it almost like uh, a little Miami has a lot of high races. So we recommend people to stay between La Barra and San Ignacio. Where it is more quiet, but we do love visiting Punta del Este. It has an amazing harbor. It has Casa Pueblo, which you can see here. Casa Pueblo was the home, you know, it's a hotel. It was the home of Carlos Fajilero, which was, uh, he was an, an Uruguay artist. He was amazing. He did it almost by hand with a lot of help from the local fishermen. Uh, but he is such an icon here. And the, the building is such a Perfect icon. We have the best sunset This is Punta del Este. You can see a lot of other races, but we do love Punta. It has a lot of history. We do go to the marina and we take um, a private yacht to Sea Lion Islands, where we have one of the biggest concentrations of sea lions in the Atlantic. Uh, we can get there and swim with the lions' families. We love this. Um, it is an amazing experience. Then we go to La Barra. We stop seeing the high races and it's more like little houses, um, little beach towns, really quiet with a lot of restaurants, a lot of uh, of shops. Then we have uh, the Maca Museum, which was um, built in 2022. It was almost during, uh, built during the pandemic and it has uh, 40 hectares of, of 40 acres, sorry, 40 acres of, of sculpture park. Which is really nice to bike, and then we do some picnics there. Paula Chuarri is an amazing. He's a sculptor. Uh, he's one of the few that can get his stones, get his marble from the same uh, quarry that Michelangelo used to used to use. So he has a lot of Carrera marble. Um, when we have people really interested in art, uh, we get to see him. He's here during the summer. So uh, oh, we can get uh, arrange uh, a meeting with him, just seeing how he works, seeing the, the sculpture park, having a picnic, which is super fun. And then we get to Jose Ignacio, which is like the more hippie chic part of the beach area. It's amazing. He has a lot of, of uh, really good restaurants. We have La Susana La Huayna, which is in the Latin American 50 best. It's a really amazing country. And in Jose Ignacio is where we have most of our activities. I mean, we have horses there. Where we do the first that right in the country and then lagoon. Um, we do have a lot of oceanic lagoons, so we do get a lot of uh, birds uh, to do the bird watching. We do get the flamingos from well, they just left now. Uh, we get them just see some on the hills. Um, but we do the horse that right to the beach, we do it with dinners, we do a lot of hikes, a lot of bikes, surfing class, kite surfing class. Um, we try to, 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 to make the best of the amazing place that we live in. It has amazing landscapes. The landscape changes, like you do, you drive one hour and the landscape changes completely. So you get to see a lot of different environments in a really short drive. 
Then we get to Rocha department, which is a bit further east and northeast from Jose Ignacio. Well, we get this little, there are really still little uh, fishing towns with a lot of nature. So we get to Laguna de Rocha, which is an amazing place for bird watching. They have a lot of them. We do take the boat out and then we have lunch in this restaurant, which is managed by the wives of the fishermen. So we try to, to, to do a, a circular economy, of course. Then we get to further east. Of, uh, the way we have Cabo Polonia, which is here. Cabo Polonia, it's uh, inside of a protected area, so they don't get like running electricity or running water. Um, it's a, as I call it, it's a hippie mega, but it's amazing. And we do have a, a four hour hike during the sun, uh, through the sand dunes to get there. You can enter by four by four, of course. Uh, if someone doesn't want to walk, but it's an amazing walk through the sand dunes and along the coast, which has a base of this. Here is Cabo Polonia, the little town. And they also have a sea column, uh, sea a column over there. And then you get back on the football floor. Sierra Verde, which is it's, uh, about uh, 30 minutes from the frontier with Brazil. Is another protected area where we love to go and all of the plans to go because in La Coronilla, this town over here, we have kind of men, which is an OMG that work with the green turtles. We love working with them and trying to get to people to, to, to connect with them to, to help um, and to know what, what work they are doing and, and such. But we do get to see some dolphins sometimes. This is uh, uh, that is a fortress, it was a, a Portuguese fortress actually. It's still there, it's, it's still amazing to see. It's inside a, a national park as well. So it's a lovely hut. And then we got the little fisherman village, which are amazing to do surf or just go to the beach. Uh, and I think, well, oh, that is it. I did it right. right. 